Have you ever actually looked at all the preferences and the options that you've got inside of Ecamm? There's a lot more in here than you might think. And you know what they say, you don't know what you don't know. So why don't we jump in there today and see if there's some nuggets inside of Ecamm that you didn't even know were there. So how do we even find the Ecamm preferences? There's actually about four different ways for you to get to it. You can either come right to the top, Ecamm Live, mine's in beta, don't worry about that, and come down to preferences, or you can come across to window, and down to preferences and notice there's a shortcut command to come through to it as well. I typically tend to come in here and just click on this little icon down the bottom corner here and tick there to show and hide the preferences. And you can leave this open all the time. If you've got a big enough screen, you can push it off to the side, not a problem. So we're gonna work through this. We can break this video into some chapters and we'll work through by the tabs. They do get easier as we go through. There's not as much in those end ones, but I don't wanna particularly rush through this. I want you to see what is in here because I've found people going, Oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. So let's have a look. And this first one might be exactly that. Now to demonstrate it and to do it properly, we need to be live. So we're just gonna go live into our test Facebook group and Owen's gonna join me in there. And so notice this first one says, play app sounds. And we've got it unchecked at the moment. Typically what would happen is, and this is exactly one of those scenarios where a customer of mine went, how do I stop this pinging noise going on? I've got people in the audience going, what is that clicking noise? So we're gonna demonstrate it. If Owen were to comment into the group now, and uh, we've got this unchecked, what we'll hear and notice is that we're not hearing that in the stream totally silent it comes up there saying hey you've got a comment now if i tick and turn this on and owen puts another comment in we've got the speakers turned up over here what you're going to find is that this time around hey we get a funny little noise there now you can imagine being in a live stream and you've got comment after comment coming in like this that's gonna get really annoying. It could get picked up in this microphone, your audience are hearing it, system audio would be picking it up as well. So the easiest way to knock that out, unless it's very rare that you get a comment and you need to be kind of woken up by it, I reckon you untick that. I'm pretty sure is the default setting. Now, showing animated reactions. This isn't something that your audience are going to see, but if your audience is suddenly liking what you're saying and you're getting lots of hearts or ticks going up in the stream, hey, look at that. Notice that up over there at the top of the comments tab you can see this just an animated way a feed of those going up and i'll tell you it's a it's a really cool feeling when you're in the middle of a live and you've said something and you start to see a load of hearts and thumbs up going up like that makes you feel really good you're just catching it out the corner of your eye thank you i think owen's really enjoying this live <laughs> but uh, there you go that's what it means about showing animated reactions so it's not coming out in your stream but it is just there, it's just a nice thing to have. So I leave that ticked on. Now, showing the program window while in other apps. If maybe I'm doing a demonstration or I've got a, a slideshow, a PowerPoint slide up in front of me, or I'm demonstrating another bit of software, maybe I've got this up here over the front of my Ecamm window. If, certainly if you're on a laptop or a smaller screen, uh, what this does is it gives me the option when I tick down here to show the program window while I'm in another app, I'm in this window here, that one floats on the front like a layer. And notice that I can actually, I've still got some commands on here. I can actually change between different scenes that I've got and I could even end the live from this small little program window. So I'll pop that to the side. I don't tend to have it there because I'm trying to strip things down and I don't want anything more on the screen than I'm likely to need. But I'm showing you it as an option. It might work for you. What about keep utility windows? So notice all these little tabs and things that I've got around me, the comments, the scenes, the overlays, they're the utility windows. So if I now go back and let's bring Handbrake back up, notice that all of these are now in front of it. So I think it's unlikely that you would want to be able to do this. There must be a reason and that's why it's been put in as an option. But um, if you've accidentally got that ticked and you're trying to show a Zoom window or demonstrate a bit of software and you don't seem to be able to get rid of all these Ecamm tabs, chances are it's because in here you've accidentally ticked these to be on. So I'm gonna turn both of those off. I don't want the show the program window and I don't want my utilities window open either. 
Um, we'll close down handbrake now as well. Now this next one down by ticking, this really follows on from the one above it about the utility windows. While I've got those utility windows open, if I click on any of these, it will then bring Ecamm back to the front. Now this uh, automatic overlay alignment. I'm not quite sure the difference of the sticky and the snappy, if I'm honest. But notice if I turn it off, let's just bring in a couple of overlays. I've got a couple of logos here prepared for you. We'll pop them off to the side. Notice that at the minute there's no kind of reference there. They're, they're not seeing each other. Now, if I turn sticky on, and as I move this one around, notice that now, oh look, see it sees that and it says that's centered up to those. Or if I come this way, again, it's telling me top and bottom just allows me to line things up either to the edge of it, the, the front of it, or to the, so it's telling me there that those edges are aligned or it telling me there that the center's aligned if it were a different size. So lots of different ways that I can align that up Interesting that doesn't seem to pick the center of it that way, it just does the top and bottom of it. Not quite sure what the difference between sticky and snappy is on this. Tell me in the comments if you know the answer to this one. They seem to me to do the same thing really. They are snapping to edges, maybe that's it. Let's just see if sticky does the same thing. It's not quite, maybe it's not quite as snappy, I'm not sure. But you get the idea, you can actually align your overlays and graphics great if you're trying to line things up and just keep it consistent and nice and neat and in order. And as a little side note, once you've got things in here, you can actually just use your arrow keys on your keyboard just to tab left, right, up, down if you just want that pixel by pixel movement. I would leave sticky on there. That seems to be the default one anyway. Now this one, when returning to live mode with unpublished changes, this is assuming that you've been in preview mode. In the preview mode, and we've got a video on preview mode that you can head over and watch. The idea is I can have a preview window open. In fact, let's do it. In order to turn this on, uh, the easiest way to do it is just to go into record only mode and there's preview. And look, we've got this little preview window back open down here. And what it means is I can be working away and changing scenes around in the preview mode. That little window is showing you what's actually going out in the feed. I can be over here. I can be adding overlays. I can move things around. And um, when I do so, and then I either hit publish and that change goes. When I hit back to live mode, that's what it's asking here. When you're returning, do you want it to publish? Well, I don't see why, because you've got the publish button next to it or revert changes. So it just carries on as it was in that scene without picking up the changes. So I would leave that one set as it is. I'm going to come out of that mode. Uh, when returning to live mode, leave it to revert changes. Now, automatically hide comments overlays after 15 seconds. If I turn this off, the comment will stay on for as long as it's there. If I were to bring in one of these comments that Owen popped in earlier, notice I've got this set to fly in. There it would sit and it would stay there all the way through the live uh, until I actually physically turned it off or got rid of it. So by ticking this on, what I can do is say that when that comes on screen here, it'll stay for 15 seconds or however many seconds I set it to, and then it will disappear off the screen afterwards. So if I bring that in again, and uh, let's just see what happens. So I can look down here. Hey, Facebook user, great to know. Thanks for getting involved. You know, in a way you go and you're talking away like this and you don't have to think, oh, now let me take that off screen because there it goes, it's just shot away. So I tend to have this on. 15 seconds, I think, is a nice interval. The bottom one uh, is getting more out of date, to be honest. Show Skype's active speaker camera. More and more of us are using Ecamm's interview mode, and it, this doesn't apply, but if you are still using Skype to bring interview guests on, this is just the active camera. In the same way that it works in Zoom and other platforms, if you've got multiple speakers on with the active speaker camera on, it will automatically cut between who's speaking rather than you manually needing to do it. So. Chances are we're not using this one. So that's everything there in the general tab, apart from check for updates. So it's down here. It's also in the top up here where you can click and go for check for updates. And uh, you can choose your recording folder here as well. So you know that when you go live, every time you do it, it records a local copy for you. 
where do they get stored you can actually choose the destination of that and this is one of the places you can find that so there's the general tab are you still with me let's head over to the account one now the account one look at that much easier and simpler in here it tells you the license that you've got your name if you want to go in and manage things like change your password your email address and things you can do so and jump in here and um, that's how you get into that okay let's jump over to stream so we've got some options in here that you can change in here and I'll show you where else you can change them as well. I don't tend to come in here personally and change them. So the stream size, you can go as high at 1080p on the basic plan. If you wanna to go to really high or 4K, then you need to be on the pro license. Now do keep in mind that Facebook will restrict your stream down to 720p anyway. YouTube will let you stream in 4K. So this is for those of you that have got good internet speeds and a good computer as well, because this will take more of the processing power to get that stream up. But if you can, you've got a reasonably new computer and good internet and want to stream in 4K, uh, I definitely recommend it, but that would require a pro license. So in here, we can set this and put our defaults in. We can change the stream shape. So notice in the window at the top here, this is me in wide. I can go to extra wide and what that will do is do that cinematic two by one. Do keep in mind though that when you do that it drops this down to 720. You can't be in 4K at extra wide. And a little tip here, I've got stuck here in the past where I've gone from this one back to wide and not appreciated that it still kept it in 720. It hadn't pushed it back up to my 4K. So if you go looking in the extra wide and come back, make sure just to change the size of it as well. Then we've got a classic, which is this four by three. We've got square and don't worry about the black bits. None of that comes out in the actual recording. And uh, we've got tool, which is great for our portrait stuff. If we want to make an Instagram video or IGTV, this is really good. Or just a live anyway on Facebook, someone holding this on their phone, all of a sudden you're full screen there in front of them. It can have a really good impact. Uh, so do have a play with these and, and see what your audience think to them. But this is the setting for getting into that. The other place that I would come into it more often is up here in the options. I can change up here my stream size and stream aspect as well. So you've got a couple of other places to go there. Your frame rate, uh, depending on where you live, UK, Europe, we tend to be on 25 frames per second, uh, 30 in the States, or you can double those up if you want to. It just means there's less of a blur, it's a sharper image, but you will need to increase the frame rate on your camera as well. So I'm gonna leave mine down here at 25 frames per second ticking using high quality video mode. It'll just increase the bit rate, the amount of information that's been sent up into the stream. As long as your computer and your internet can handle it, a bit like I was saying about 4K, then absolutely turn this on. At the end of the day, if Ecamm sees that you don't have the bandwidth for this, it'll just bring it down anyway. So I would tick that one on. High quality audio, Ecamm tell us that the standard setting is more than enough for most of us. This is really for a musician or someone who wants that extra quality. I tend to leave it ticked anyway. There's no harm in this. I've got good internet, so why wouldn't I? Then finally on here, changing the uh, format from .mov to MP4. Totally up to you really as to which file size is going to be easier to access. The actual data inside will be the same in both of them. It is just that package format that changes from .mov to MP4. I would encourage you to just leave that set to .mov. And that's the stream tab. Not too bad. Video. My default this is set that your default source mode is camera. So when you're creating a new scene, so if I click up here on plus and say new scene, it's going to come in as my camera as my default source. Now if I change this to blank and now I hit a plus, my default window comes through as blank. And actually more and more now, I'm starting out like this and uh, bringing in a screen overlay, bringing in my camera overlay. So you might decide, you know what, every time I do it, it comes in as camera and then I change it over. Well, you can actually change the default down here as to what that new scene will do. Then you've got a default transition. So when you go from scene to scene, to demonstrate this, why don't we just set this scene up here and I'll zoom in slightly so you can see a difference. So when I go from one scene to another, what is that transition between them? Now we can turn this off altogether. So if I say no transition, it just does a little jump there. 
Oh, we've got all kinds of other transitions that you can do as you jump between. Do go easy on them. I think they can look a bit tacky if you're doing this and you're jumping around a lot. Um, a nice dissolve might be nice. Uh, there's some slow dissolves and a slower dissolve. A very smooth transition from one thing to the other. That's a little bit too slow, but it might well work. I don't know. Maybe you're bringing a slideshow of images or something and you like that look. Now, I believe that the last few of these from cross zoom light rays ripple copy machine are all pro features so you do need to be on the pro license again to have these now the other thing to keep in mind is that we can change this as the default transition but in any individual scene if i decide i want to have that different then i can come up here and i can choose a different transition so maybe i want swipe in this scene so from this scene here it's kept up the default the copy machine but from this one going to another one, it now does that swipe. Now you can get really stuck in this and if you're trying to change them around and you've individually set the transitions, it can be really hard to find them and clear them out and uh, you need to come back up to this and say, uh, stay with the default transition and just stick to one and uh, keep it there. Now I tend to just have cross dissolve, a nice soft subtle little fade from one to the other. We've got another few down here, fade out when finished. So when you finish your live broadcast, it'll just do a nice fade to black at the end. Um, auto play video files. So if I've created a scene and I've dropped a video into it, when I open that scene, it will automatically play the video rather than me needing to look around for the play control and start it. So nine times out of 10, you wanna have this ticked on. I show picture in picture above overlays. If I were doing a screen share, what will we pick? Let's just uh, actually come down here and we'll use these preferences window. There it is. Um, <laughs> so we've got our preferences on and I've got a picture in picture there. If I were to bring a comment over the front of this, so maybe uh, somebody's comment here, notice how that now sits behind my picture in picture rather than when it's unticked it now sits in front so again there's times where that might be really useful to have that just over the front and you don't want overlays and things getting in the way of it um, entirely up to you whether that's a that's a, something you want to keep on or not now this next one down, uh, show picture in picture in new video and screen share scenes. So if I were to open up a new video scene over here, it will bring in the picture in picture over the front as a default. All these little tweaks and things to take out really. If every time you do it, you go, oh, I didn't want to be a picture in picture. Well, just make sure that's unticked down here. Show NDI and siphon title full screen. This is, as it says down here, this is people using things like Pro Presenter and that, I believe, that were struggling to get full size. So uh, I think you'll know whether you're needing and using that. Uh, most of us, that's not going to be something to look at. Disable the built in camera. So if you're on a iMac or a MacBook Pro and it's got a FaceTime HD camera inside there, this will turn it off. Probably if you have got that, of found it frustrating at times where it keeps defaulting to that one and you want it to be using this camera you can actually like me actually just tick and disable that so that it isn't going to go to that camera again if you're frustrated going why can't i find the camera in my laptop it's possibly because you've got that ticked so that's the video options. How are we doing? Shake it off. I feel like we're kind of working through a school assignment here. Uh, let's jump onto audio. I really do think it is worth you just going through these though, that you might be surprised at the things that you pick up. And this one particularly, there's some good stuff here. Now speakers, you can actually decide where your default speakers are going. And I've had it in the past where I'm on a call and people are going, I can't hear you. And we've got into it and I've worked out with them that in here, they've got it set to somewhere else like a pair of headphones. They were thinking it was should be coming through the speakers. So do always double check if you're having problems hearing your guest or something else coming through, it may well be that your speakers are set wrong in here. Now actually the best option probably for the speakers is to say set to system default and then it will follow whatever your computer's set to do. Now echo cancellation, you can come in down here and tick this on and off for individual scenes uh, or you can set it up here by default so when you're opening up scenes and creating new ones it will have echo cancellation in as default. What is happening here with echo cancellation? The idea is that if, for example, I'm speaking to a guest, I'm having a conversation with them on the live, 
And guess what? This microphone in front of me not only is hearing my voice, but it's hearing anything else in the room. So it can be picking up from my speakers, the guest, and this is when you get this echo effect come through. It sounds like it's hearing it twice with a few seconds delay potentially. What this is doing then is with echo cancellation, you're telling the computer to ignore what's coming through the speaker and only hear you through here. This used to be the case that it only worked with built-in Apple speakers, but with this latest update, it will also recognize external speakers as well and stop picking up from them. And that's its next tick down here, as you can see. So that's pretty exciting. Now, broadcast system audio, uh, this will be picking up what your computer's playing, if that makes sense. Rather than the sound from me, if I'm playing a video, if I'm sharing a browser window and there's a video or there's music playing in there, then that's system audio, that's sound coming from the computer. And we're not talking about a video that's playing like I just showed you there and brought in a video clip. That's down here as a movie. It's only going to appear actually when I'm bringing in a screen share, notice that system audio suddenly pings up again because now it's going, oh, there might be potential sound coming from your computer, do you wanna hear it? So it gives you some options here as defaults. Maybe you never want this to come on or we want it to come on when you're sharing your screen or you want system audio on all the time. Again, not quite sure why you would want that, but it might be in your specific user case, there's an option here to turn it on and off. If you find you keep coming over here and changing it, these are the defaults. Now this one here, automatically you mute microphone and guest audio during video playback. This has been a real lifesaver when actually all of a sudden I'm talking up here and I wanna play a video and it just allows me, I know that my microphone, notice down there, that microphone is just muted. So if I think I'm playing a video and I wanna cough or I'm tapping on my keys, typing something in quickly, uh, using that video as a buffer, then yes, this is because I've automatically muted it. But there have been times where someone's gone, why can't I hear myself when I'm playing this video in the background? Maybe you wanna stay on a picture in picture over the front of here and, and talk over what's going on and you forget that you've been muted. There's an option there to mute yourself, but I would always personally tick that on and uh, I think way better to be muted and have to bring the mic on if need be than be the other way around and you're going, Ah, oh, this is hard work. <laughs> you think it's muted and it isn't. So there you go. There's a there's a tip for you. Make sure that is ticked. Now, mic delay. What is this talking about? You might find, I certainly have found, and you can see I've got this turned on now permanently. If you've got a separate camera input to an audio input, maybe you've got a camera coming across HDMI, you've got a microphone that's on a USB, you notice that in your recordings, they're just a little bit out of sync. Now, if you were editing it, you could be lining those back up again. But if you're doing a live, you wanna get it right as you go. So what this allows you to do is to build in some microphone delay. So by default, this would sit back here on zero. It's doing nothing. What I have found is that since I've been using a USB microphone, there has been a bit of delay and it's been bugging me when I've watched the video back afterwards. And so I can just add a couple of frames of delay in this. Now, you saw earlier on the other tab that we were talking about 25 frames per second. So when I'm putting a two frame delay on this, that's two 25ths of a second. It's not a lot that we're talking about, but it's enough to just look slightly out of sync. Now, I'm not gonna go any more into detail on this. We've actually done another video up here talking about how to deal with this microphone delay. Uh, I've got some tips on how I do it just to practice that through and work out exactly what that is doesn't need to be technical. You don't need to go off to some editing software. Um, check that video out and that will help you. Mapping your input channels one and two to the left and right stereo. If you're using a stereo microphone, Ecamm will mix it all together by default. If you wanna keep them separated, then you can tick on here, but do keep in mind then that will be a different audio to your left and right. So if someone's only listening with one speaker in their ear and there's a track coming in on the left side, they're gonna to totally miss it. I think most of us will just leave this unticked. There's an interesting option here, muting the movie sound on speakers. So if I were to play that movie clip in here and had this ticked, let's go back to our scene where Darren's talking. I now can't 
hear him, even though the microphone's up on here and I can see that it's playing down there to my audience, but it's muted. So there's no chance of this coming through or getting any echo. It now shows me at the top here that this is counting down uh, five seconds before the end of the video. So you don't necessarily need to be able to hear it. Personally, uh, I wouldn't have that muted because I wanna be able to hear what's going on. Knowing that my microphone is muted while the video is playing allows me to listen to that. Then finally, this recorded isolated audio tracks. What does this mean? You can now, and this is great for those of you that are doing podcasts, you can now use Ecamm to record that. And instead of it just mixing all the audio together, maybe there are sound effects, there's a video, there's your microphone, there's your guest's microphone. Until this point, Acam just put it all in there together into one file. Now in your folder, if you were to tick this, it'll give you your microphone, your guest microphone, your video, your system audio, everything's broken down there individually. So an editor can take that away. And this would be really good if maybe your guest was a bit quieter than you and you hadn't picked up on it. It would allow you to afterwards go, yeah, let's just lift their volume up a bit and bring us back into line and put it together later as an edited thing. So you still get that master file, but as well as it, you get all of these individual tracks as well. I don't have that ticked because I don't do a lot of interviewing. I certainly don't want to be able to pull those out separately. But for those of you doing podcasts in particular, this would be really important to have that ticked on. And that's audio. Over to interview, um, not too much in here, playing a ring chime. So when someone comes into your, let's bring up our interview tab over here. If someone were to, I've sent an invite out and someone's about to join me in an interview, it'll play a chime just to say, oh, somebody's over there. This would be useful if maybe you've got that hidden or not even open and just didn't want to miss the fact that someone's sitting waiting over there. But you can turn it off if you find that that noise is annoying. Auto answering a guest. So at the minute it comes in and I have to, like you would on a phone, give it hit the green tick to say, yes, bring them in. You can tick this and have them automatically join. Again, by default, it sends people into the green room when they do join. If I untick this, it'll bring them straight into the broadcast when I let them in. This is another new feature. When you've got a guest on here, maybe you're playing an intro countdown and uh, you've already got a guest sitting here. This was a fairly new feature that actually while that intro video or any video is playing, you can have a private conversation with your guest and it's not being heard by your audience. And one of the things that a few of us had said is it's a bit of a shame when that track is playing that you can't turn it down at all. So there is an option on here now to lower the music and movie sound for guests when you're in the off-air audio mode. So that means that video can be playing and the guest and I can have a conversation with that sound taken down a bit. Great. Guest view is the final option on here and uh, broadcast is the default. So when they come in as a guest, what are they looking at on their screen? The broadcast will be showing potentially both of us on screen or whatever the actual live feed is. If you tick that back to the host camera, then all they can see in front of them is themselves and they've got no idea what's going on. I'm not quite sure why you would want to do that, but it's again, it must have been requested for it to be put in here as a feature. You can change this and your guest can change it as well. They get a little symbol next to their image and they can, during the live, switch between seeing their camera and seeing the feed. So there you go. You've then got a button over here to customize the interview settings, which is the same as the settings over there. So if I tick on that, I can change some of these settings. These are looking at the actual page title of what opens up in front of someone, the logos that are on in front of them, the guest links, all these different things. I'll let you go and have a look at those. That's kind of another video. Okay, so screen sharing. This is about the last one. There's not a lot in the next few. Stay with me. Tell me in the comments if you're keeping up and you're still here. Now, do we want to include desktop icons? This is when we're sharing our screen. Now let's demonstrate this. If I come up to here and I say, share my entire screen, notice that I've actually got these things turned off at the minute. Let me um, turn that back on at the bottom and maybe actually to make this more dramatic, let's go back to our background. Let's um, pick one of the default backgrounds. So maybe this is what you sit at all day and when you share your screen, you decide you don't want to show this background. You don't want this image coming through. What I can do is say, I'm jumping down to the second one, sorry, include desktop picture. So if I untick that, it'll show a black screen as default and it gets rid of it. 
Some of you I know have got really messy desktops full of loads of different files and icons and things over there. And the easy way to get rid of them, you don't have to stick them all into a folder and get rid of them. You can just magically tick include desktop icons, take it off, and no one can see your cluttered desktop anymore. And you can get rid of that desktop picture. Slight kind of pro tip really, this is what we do, is we change that desktop background and we put a color on. We use our branded color here. And doesn't that look a lot smarter in front of you to have that as your desktop background rather than seeing a brightly colored picture or a family photo or whatever you have on there. Uh, I think this is a much smarter and more professional way to do presentations. Now they are picking up my uh, tabs along the bottom. I would just click on this and turn this hiding on so it gets rid of those. We've pretty much got back to uh, having a clean screen there. You have an option here to add a margin when zooming in on that window. Let's imagine we are um, looking at handbrake. And so what this is doing is saying, when I'm looking at here on my handbrake window, do I want it to be able to go to the full width of that window? Or if I add a margin, notice that it is just leaving a margin around the outside of it now and not pushing it all the way to the edges. Um, again, that's personal preference. Optimize for better quality, higher frame rate. This will be the frame rate of what you're playing here. So maybe if that were a video or a game or something and you decided actually a higher frame rate was more important for the screen share than the quality. It's not a sliding scale, it's just one or the other. So I tend to keep it down there on better quality. Including your mouse cursor. So again, we will just jump back over here. So here I am and I'm demonstrating handbrake, but you can't see where my mouse is going. Over there on that screen, you notice you can't see my mouse. Maybe for my tutorial, I actually want to say, come up here, go over there, and, and I want you to see that mouse. So that's an option in here. Did you know that was an option? Uh, and then you can just the size of that look we can have a gigantic mouse if we want to pointing around on here so that can be good but again you might find that when it's, it's annoying you that you can't get rid of this well that's where it is is to include that or not if it is on as it says there show mouse clicks it will just sort of give that circle when you're clicking or you could turn that off if you don't want it on and then this bottom one down here is an option if we come back up to entire screen You'll notice that Ecamm isn't included in this when it's doing this, uh, it's showing the screen. If I tick down here, now we see everything and it's overridden. You can see my icons and things are down the side here. Now it's kind of overridden turning off those background bits. Again, let's clear that off. You're seeing everything. Be wary of this because you can potentially get this looping thing going on when you're sharing your screen. But uh, if you wanted to do that, uh, it's on here. I'm not quite sure. With this one, the alternative is I could do my um, live demo mode. This is what I tend to do when I'm doing a screen recording or a demonstration. Gives me this red frame around the outside and I know that everything is being seen here then in a safe way when I'm demonstrating Ecamm to somebody. But there is that option there. If you find it frustrating that you can't see these things, there's an option there to tick that on and off. For those of you that are still with me, please tell me in the comments that you're still here. Let's have a look and find out who made it this far through. As I said, this wasn't the most exciting video, but I think it's really important to get these, just these foundational settings and things under your belt really. We've got Facebook, so show the title field. If I'm coming to Facebook, notice that it just says enter a description. Typically, if I'm about to go live and just wanna hit go live, I can just put a description in there. By ticking here, it now gives me a title, but nobody sees the title when you just go live. All we see is the description. So I tend to have this turned off because if I wanna actually schedule one, then I get a different window anyway, and I put my title and description in this way. So that's what I would do. Disallow embedding, so if you tick this on, then it means that this your live stream then can't get embedded into another video. Then we've got some business page settings in here for cross-posting if you wanted to. But this would allow me to, whenever I go live, it would cross-post. It would also go onto the Ecamm network page as well. We're not going to go into the settings on that. You need to set that up inside Facebook. You need to get permission from the third party as well. Sponsor ID. Uh, honestly, I'm not too sure about this one. Provide a Facebook sponsor ID for branded content posts. I guess 
check that out. You would know if you've got a branded content post and uh, you can put your ID in there. But there we go, that's Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, you just need to put your location in. Twitch, same thing. Twitter, uh, a low latency mode. Streaming it with a low latency, meaning there's less of a delay from you saying it to it being heard. And the same setting is down here in the YouTube tab that you can choose the stream latency. Now, I ran some tests last year on this and with the latency in normal, we found there was a 20 to 30 second delay from me saying it to it actually coming out on the broadcast. And while that can help with buffering and making sure that it, you know you don't have any problems with it it's preparing a really good file for your audience it can be a right pain if you're live streaming and you ask a question and you're sitting waiting for an answer uh, ultra low latency means it's really quick and there's almost no delay in it but uh, there could be potentially problems so I tend to stick with this default low latency and find that there's I think we've found about 12 to 15 seconds delay in there if you found differently or got other input on that, please let us know in the comments again. Uh, always happy to hear from people if they're practicing and playing with these settings. Now we jumped across one there, the category. So whether you've got entertainment or education, uh, whatever you tend to find, you put as a category in your YouTube videos, you can select that in here in advance. Uh, and made for kids. The last thing we're gonna say on the preferences, and a lot of people get confused over this. We have actually made an article about it. We'll link in the description to it. Uh, it's not suggesting that it is safe for kids. It's not thinking that you're doing 18 content or R-rated or whatever it is in the States. This is just saying, what, who's your primary audience? And it's to do with advertising and things like that, comments being turned on or off. So unless you are speaking to children as your primary audience, don't tick made for kids. Okay, so check out that article if you want to find out more about it. Yeah, don't tick made for kids. So there you go. There's the preferences. Well done if you made it all the way through with us. <laughs> There's a lot to that. Please, I would love to hear from you uh, and answer any questions that you've got about it. But I think it's good just to know and maybe there's just a few things in there and I'd love to hear from you. Why don't you let me know in the comments what particularly, was there anything in there that you went, didn't know that was there. I often find when we're doing lives and we're doing our academies, people go, whoa, I didn't know that. And you just, it is that. You don't know what you don't know. Hopefully that's been useful for you today. Please do check out the other videos. We've got a whole channel on Ecamm videos. If you haven't watched them already, head over and watch those and uh, I'll see you in one of those videos. Thanks so much, bye.